We use our computers a lot in our daily life and well, the way we use a computer is something that we've gotten very used to. We have a keyboard, we have a mouse, and we use the two in unison to interact with the user interface. But what if one day your mouse suddenly gives up on you? For one reason or another, you might actually get cut off from using your mouse. Now, all hope is not lost. You can actually operate a Windows computer without a mouse, and I wouldn't say you'd be able to do everything, like you probably would not be able to play most games without a mouse, but at least to find your way around the interface and you know do some things like work with documents, work with text, browse the internet, it is all possible. All you need to know is how. Now this particular episode is a suggestion by YouTube user Coleslaw Productions, so thank you very much for your suggestion. I thought it was a wonderful idea, which is why, well, I'm doing this video. Anyways, stay tuned for using your Windows computer with only a keyboard after the break. Hello and welcome to another Random Wednesday video. So here's how I've organized this particular video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the most generic, that is actually manipulating windows and popping around using your desktop. Then I'm going to look at just a small number of specific things that you might want to do. That is things like surfing the web, working with your file explorer, or editing text in a word processor. Then we're going to move on to actually look at some things we could do if we really needed a mouse. First and most importantly, you need to be able to launch programs and manipulate windows with your keyboard. Now, luckily, the former is extremely easy to do. All you have to do is to hit the start button on your keyboard and start typing away. This invokes the windows search function. And in fact, that is how you run programs because you search for the program you want. It appears in a list, you use your arrow keys to select it and you press enter to open it. When you have something open and you want to close it, Alternate F4 will close down entire programs, and the escape button will close down open dialog boxes. If you ever need to right click, most keyboards actually have a context menu shortcut key, but if that's missing from your keyboard, you can also press Shift F10. To access any menu item, hold down the alternate key. This will actually show some little underlines for your menu items, and by just pressing the corresponding key on your keyboard, you will pop open that particular menu. You can also just press alternate and use the arrow keys to navigate around instead. This one is a famous one, you can use the alternate tab to switch between different applications. Basically alternate tab will show up this switcher menu by just pressing the tab button you will choose a program and when you lift up the alternate key, that is the program you will jump to. For a program with tabs like a browser or a settings page, use control tab to change the tab you're looking at. Also, of course, you can use the tab key to select any UI element on a page. Once it is selected, you will be able to interact with it. By the way, for any tab-related keystroke, holding down shift while running the keystroke will actually make things go in the opposite direction. So you're not actually fixed in moving in one direction through tabs or through UI elements. Okay, let's talk about moving windows around. First, to maximize a window, hold down your Windows key and press up. You can also maximize it to either side of the screen hold down Windows and press left or right. To restore maximize window, hold down the Windows key and press down. In this state, to minimize it entirely to the taskbar, do the same keystroke again. To see your desktop, press Windows D. Now, to actually get everything back to the way it was right before you did that, do Windows D again. If you really need to see the operations associated with a window, press alternate space and that will show up a little menu. If you choose the move option, you can then use your arrow keys to move a window around. Okay, let's talk word processing. Now, you probably already know this, but pressing up, down, left, or right will move your text cursor throughout a paragraph of text. However, you can actually combine this with certain other modifier keys, and well, these might do things you don't know. For example, you can move through text faster by holding down control before you use the left and right key. This will actually cause your cursor to jump an entire word at a time instead of letter by letter. In some programs, you can also combine control with backspace and that will delete word by word instead of letter by letter. To go to the start or end of a line, press the home and end buttons on your keyboard. Control home or control end will move your cursor to the very top or the very bottom of a document. Now, you can also make selections in text, hold down shift and use your arrow keys. 
and this will select bits of text. You can also combine this with some of the keystrokes we just looked at, so Control shift and arrow keys will select word by word, whereas if you combine this with home and end, you'll be able to select entire lines or even the entire article if you want. Of course, on top of that, there are some formatting related keys that you probably already know, so I'm going to just go through this very quickly. Control B for bold, Control I for italics, Control U for underline, Control P for print, Control S for save, Control Z for undo, and Control Y for redo. Okay, on to surfing the net. Surfing the net with just the keyboard is also extremely possible. You can use Control T to open a new tab, and Control W to close your currently selected tab. At any point of time, you can press the F6 button and that will bring your cursor up to the URL bar. Speaking of the URL bar, you do not have to type in complete URLs. You can just hit Control Enter and that will fill in both the www at the start as well as the .com at the end. Firefox also allows autocomplete for .NET and .org domains. If you do Shift Enter in Firefox, the autocomplete will fill in .NET at the end instead. Whereas if you do Control Shift Enter, it'll fill it in with .org. You can reopen a closed tab by using Control shift t and if you have multiple tabs open, by pressing Control and any number on your keyboard, you basically jump straight to that tab, and well, the tabs are of course numbered from 1 to 9. With regard to individual pages, if nothing is selected, you can actually press space to scroll down in a page. Use F5 to reload a page, and Escape to stop a page from loading. You can use alternate left and alternate right, like your back and forward buttons. Backspace also works the same way, basically it is also a back button. On top of that, you can also use alternate home to go to your home page. With regard to zooming a page, you can use Ctrl minus and Ctrl plus to change the zoom, as well as Ctrl zero to return things to the default zoom value. Alright, we're about to wind this all down, but first let us take a look at the Windows Explorer window. Many of the shortcuts are similar to your actual web browser. Alternate left and right are also forward and backward keys, whereas backspace will actually move you up one level. You can hit F12 to rename a file or use alternate enter to see its properties. If you're in the tree view, you can also use the left and right buttons to open or close branches. And that is how you basically find your way around a computer with just the keyboard. Now here's the view. If you still really need to use your cursor, Windows actually does give you a feature for that. This feature is called mouse keys and similar to launching any other application, you can actually use that little search box in the start menu to search for mouse keys. And then once you switch mouse keys on, you can actually use your number pad to move your cursor around. The alternative to this will be to find some mobile app which will turn your phone into some kind of touchpad, and that will also allow you to manipulate your cursor. And there you go! If you don't have a mouse, you can still use your computer. It might be a little bit hard, you might have to remember some additional keystrokes that you don't normally use a lot, but it's definitely possible. Anyway, that basically wraps it up for this random Wednesday episode. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello! If you enjoyed this video, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe. For more updates outside of YouTube, do follow my official Twitter account at 0612TV. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can also check out my About Me page. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV.